So I'm joined by Ian Nathan, the manager of Global Gas and LNG at the Research and Advisory Group at Energy Intelligence. Welcome, Ian. Thank you for joining us. Just to start off, so this is the second year that we've had a gas day at Oil & Money. What is different about this year? Well, it's interesting. Uh, we're seeing a much uh, stronger demand growth in gas and LNG markets this year. Um, and that's also leading us to see that uh, there is also still potential for strong growth over the longer term as well. Uh, there are several factors at play there that, uh, um, that really are allowing us to see that, that trend. But at the same time, it's interesting because we're also seeing some greater uncertainty with potential headwinds in the longer term gas market, particularly, I should say, in power generation, where the increasing competitiveness of solar and wind and other technological advancements, battery and storage solutions, for example, are, um, are looming that could potentially keep gas from reaching its full potential. I believe. Okay, thank you. And what do you think suppliers have to do to deal with this supply gap that is predicted next decade? Well, there are a few things with the supply gap that a lot of folks seem to be concerned about. Uh, this is something that's not new. It is, uh, it's, it's been a great concern for a while now. Um, but I also think it's not necessarily on the supplier's shoulders to resolve that. A lot of this has to do with buyers and buyer uncertainty being resolved in large measure. Um, you know, we see that based on capacity under construction and perhaps a couple of additional projects that might reach FID, uh, we see that keeping the supply situation from tightening too much next decade. Um, there are a couple of high profile projects and other uh, capacity additions that uh, are likely to move forward. And, you know, and that's great, but I think one of the things we have to keep in mind is this buyer uncertainty based on some of these other potential headwinds that I just mentioned that are keeping some of those folks from really committing to the volumes that they may have otherwise committed to several years ago. Um, you know, and that includes uh, utility restructuring and other uncertainties in the home sectors with regard to that, that ultimate demand. Um, and that's what's prompting a lot of the shorter contracts, smaller volumes, and other desire for more flexibility in their procurement strategies. Um, and this year at Oil & Money there's been a particularly strong trading presence. What are your thoughts on the expanding role of traders in the LNG market? Well, primarily, I think the first thing is optimization of shipments. And that's really helping uh, cargos get to where they need to be. But bigger picture, it's a liquidity issue. And the traders are providing that extra boost to liquidity in the LNG market that, uh, that, that people have really been talking about and, and really wanting. Um, you have traders on both sides of the wholesale transaction. And that's, that's really important because they're both buyers and sellers. And that's where that additional liquidity becomes huge. And liquidity in the LNG market is an issue this year. It was a big topic last year um, because project promoters would love to be able to advance their projects uh, based on a, a, an LNG market liquid enough to be able to absorb volumes without existing or uh, without commitments. Uh, lenders uh, are still not quite there yet, and so there's that, that looming gap that increased liquidity will ultimately help bridge. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you. Thank you.